What's going on guys and welcome to Boosted Motorsports. Behind me I have the Dodge Ram 1500 SST edition with the 5.7 liter Hemi swap. So if you're new to the channel and you want to see how we got to this point, go check out the other videos. But here she is. It runs. I can't say it drives. We have forward gears on the 727 transmission. So this thing, when we picked it up, it wasn't running. It was an abandoned truck with a blown engine. It had a built 727. We don't know by who, but it does have a trans brake on it. And I saw your guys' comments in the last video that said, try putting or applying the trans brake while you put in reverse and we might actually get reverse. I've never had one of these built three speeds, but it has one. So that's what we're gonna try in this video along with a bunch of other stuff that we need to address on this. Also, I might still send out over in the corner there, I have an 8HP70. I might send out that TCM so that we can get started on maybe getting this thing in here. So either way, I'm probably gonna send that out so that I have that on the way but we're gonna wire up the transbait controller. Also, you'll see over here, our fans showed up. So I've got dual electric fans with an aluminum shroud. This is gonna be all bolt up. So we'll get those on there, get that wired in. Also still have to wire up our alternator because it's not kicking on, even though we have the positive lead going to our fuse panel, we don't have it kicking on. There's two pins on the back here. I believe that we need to set up some sort of trigger so that the alternator is actually activated and starts charging the system. So we got a bunch of little stuff. I will show you guys what I just briefly started looking at here. So inside here, this is what I assume to be was the original trans brake. You gotta remember none of the wiring is, uh, the existing wiring is even wired up anymore. The transmission and the engine wasn't even in the vehicle when we purchased it, but I'm assuming this was the trans brake. So for now, I'm just gonna, since I already got a button here, I'm gonna just wire up this button, but uh, I'm gonna have to, remove this dash bezel and I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it off in one piece boys. So um, I'm gonna just try to get to that. So let's start off with that. Let's uh, see if we can take the dash apart without uh, it completely falling apart and we'll see how far we get. Let's see, this is probably not gonna be. Oh geez, there she goes. The whole dash is coming with it. So I can't even pull out the cup holders without the whole dash just absolutely disintegrating. Oh my goodness. Oh. oh, that comes out. Not good, boys. Not good. Oh my. I mean, at this point, it kind of just is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> that is crazy. I know they're fragile, but holy camoly. So. You guys are getting mad at me for this. This was already cracked, so I know a lot of people were commenting on the wood green. But yeah, okay. So there's that. Let's see. Well, that came out. We got one speed clip out. Night carambis. Carambis. Phillips screws and we should be able to get to the back of this switch at least or we could just lift it out of the way. <laughs> Alright, so here's our wiring for the trans brake, I think. So there's one side of the wire. There's the other side. It almost looks like it's wired into the cigarette lighter. And it is. So they've tapped into the cigarette lighter for the power and then this carries on. So technically if I run this to the trans brake, it should have power. Let's uh let's double check here, make sure this is live when we press this button if it <laughs> if it's pressable. Okay, so it does look like when I press this that we've got power with the test light. So now this wire just has to make it to our trans brake wire that's on the transmission. So let me extend this, and again, this is super temporary, you guys, just to see what we got here. But let me extend this, and then we'll go underneath the truck. All right, so here is our trans brake wire. Just got temporarily hooked up here, so it's connected. Let's go up top and see what happens. 
All right, you guys, so here we go. Let's see what we got. So first, let's try keying on and see if we can hear this solenoid click. And it says buzzer's done buzzing. All right, so when we push this, let's see if we can hear anything. I don't really hear any solenoid or anything clicking, but I don't know, let's try her out. Okay, so we're gonna put it in reverse, so one click down. And let my foot off the brake. No action, no wheel spin. I'm gonna press the button. Oh, you guys hear that? So, it works, you guys. When I press the button, look at that. Full wheel spin. So you guys can hear it clunk because the drive shaft's barely hanging on there, but Whee! that is some solid reverse, I'll tell you that much. All right. So I also heard if you put it in neutral, it'll also go in reverse. So let's see. So here we go, park, reverse, wait, park, reverse, neutral. And then if we hit this button, hey, we got reverse. All right, so that's a huge success, you guys. So now we have a working transmission. And like I said, if we put it in the next gear down, we've got forward gears. I don't know if this is three, two, one, or one, two, three, let's see. So this is the first one after neutral. This is the second one. Yeah, so it's one, two, three. You can see that's going way faster. And then, yeah, now she's motoring like crazy. So it's a one, two, three setup. Should be second. And then if I go one more up, this should be first. Yeah. And then neutral. Heck yeah. Alright, well let's shut this thing down. And let's get the fans and all this other stuff sorted out. But that was a huge success, boys. Glad uh somebody, well, a bunch of people recommended it trying it, or a bunch of people suggested it in the last video. So shout out to all you folks. This is my first 727 old school transmission, and uh, yeah, obviously I'm learning along with you guys, but that was the ticket. All right, so I hate to follow that up with this, but this is what I was telling you guys. I have an eight speed sitting right here that could go in there. So I'm thinking eventually we might put her in there. I've got the torque converter and the whole unit. So it would just be a matter of getting the standalone to run this putting it in, making up a bracket to hold the back of the transmission, the tail shaft portion of it. So I'd have to make up a transmission mount and this thing would bolt into here. So comment down below, eight speed or three speed? Now that we've got a working three speed, at least right now I can move it around so the three speed will stay in there for that long, but I've got it here, boys. She's here on the cart, ready to go in if we want to. Um, I picked up this transmission used, so I'm, hopefully it's not hurt. That's the other thing too, is we could go ahead and install that and who knows what kind of fate that's in. The good news is eight speeds these days are uh, pretty plentiful. So if this one was hurt, we could get another one, but I don't know. The only other thing too is if we were to put the eight speed in here, I was talking to my buddy Brett about it, is there really isn't a whole lot of room on the dash to throw the gear selector knob so you could do a console shifter but we don't have a console in this truck so that wouldn't really make sense but i don't know where we would put the dial like we could probably put it here but then i don't know where our climate control would go it would make sense to put it here but then we lose our whole climate control knobs and whatnot so i don't know do you guys have any suggestions this is kind of what we're left with so let me know down below what you guys think also my window did fall down the last time I put it down so I'm gonna have to put it back on the track so that is another thing we got to do but let's move on to some fun stuff let's do the fan and the alternator those are two essential things that we can get working right now okay here we go guys so we've got a bunch of stuff going on I've got the input and output harness from Holly so we're gonna use this to kick on our fan once we get to there so that's that, I've got a diode, I've got the Holly wiring diagram, and now I'm going to dig into my stockpile of Mopar wiring. <laughs> so what happens when you build multiple builds of Mopars customs and uh, have all sorts of wiring harnesses. So what I need to do is find a plug that will plug into 
our alternator so that I can start wiring that up and then uh, we'll get started on that. So let me dig through there and find the connector. All right, so here is the harness we need or the pigtail we need, whatever you wanna call it. So we're gonna snip a roni right there. And now, we get rid of our spare harness. I'm telling you guys, this stuff always comes in handy. Keeping all those, because a lot of the connectors are the same. Essentially, this is the same as a fuel injector clip. But anyways, we've got that. So now we've got a pigtail. Now we've got to wire it in. All right, so we've got our fans here. I just took off the cheesy little non-waterproof connectors that they had. We've got one of these, I don't know how you say it. Dennis is over here too. <laughs> I was gonna, I think they're called Deutsch, but I keep calling them douche connectors. So douche. <laughs> I got them here. I'm gonna just wire them up uh, together. I don't think these are that powerful. Me and Dennis were talking about it. So the wire that comes out of them is uh, pretty puny. So it's not like a, uh, I don't know how you say it, SPAL, SPAL fan, or it draws a ton of power. So we'll see how these fare out. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get this wired in. Let's get this in. It's gonna mount with four bolts to our factory radiator. So I'm kind of excited to see how that all fits. So let's get it in. All right, little update. We've got Dennis over here working on some more wiring. He's actually wiring it in the alternator. We had to order some parts for the alternator, so we're gonna um, see how that goes. But we got the fans working. So right now, they're wired in. So this wire goes across, and I'm gonna button everything up, you guys. This is like literally just testing phase. So I got this in here, it goes across. We got it into a relay, and then we've got it running all the way back. And again, we're gonna button all these wires up later but there's our input and output jumper on the back from our Holly. So they give you four outputs um, or inputs from the Holly that you can control. So we wired it into there. So our electronic control or electronic fans, I should say, both of them are gonna be controlled by the Holly. So over here, I've got the Holly set up and I'll show you guys where that control is, if you guys are curious. So if we go over here, and we go to the system basic input and output right here so right here fan number one so i've set it up we tested it i turned it to like 50 degrees and the fan kicked on no problem and it's essentially what it's doing is it's turning on and off a uh ground so our ground is kicking on our relay and then our relays supplying positive power of course to our fans so right here you can adjust. So I have them set probably a little bit high right now. They kick on at 190, kick off at 185. I've got 160 degree thermostat in there, so she should run pretty cool. But that's that setup there. And yeah, you can also, as you can see here, um, there has an, it has another checkbox here for engine running only. So you can make it so that when the engine's only running or if you're just keyed on that the fans will run. So they got some options there for you. And right now we're gonna mess with the alternator wiring and then once I get that working as well I'll show you guys all the functionality on this thing running because right now if I try to start it It's just gonna drain the battery because it's running off of the battery. I don't have the alternator generating current So um, let me get working on that figure out this alternator thing and then uh, I'll show you guys with it running All right, so with the help of Dennis, we've got even though I don't have the Relay that we want to use we want to use a solid-state relay. I have just a traditional relay Probably not the best for it because it's going to be turning it on and off five billion times but we're going to just test it out see if she works so we've got it wired in we've got it wired to our holly ecu the holly is essentially going to send a pwm signal so pulse with modulated signal to our relay so essentially what it's going to do is turn on and off our relay with a negative charge really fast and that's going to turn on and turn off our alternator and through the relay it's going to send a positive voltage on and off really fast essentially that's dumbing it down as much as i can and then over here on the holly we've got pwm alternator enabled we're going to try it with these basic settings it's going to be a little bit of trial and error so i've got it turned on for basic i'm going to target it for 13 and a half volts we could turn it up to 14 but uh, we're going to see what happens i also had to configure the output on the pin map so if I go over here, pin map, 
Hopefully you guys can see without too much glare, but it is what it is. View outputs. So I set it up for B11, output number two. Again, like I said, we had four outputs. You can see them right here. And I've got alternator PWM P minus. So like I said, it's gonna be a negative charge coming out. And it's set up for that pin. So I've wired it all in. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I just saved the settings. I don't know if we're gonna be able to use this relay because this relay is going bananas right now. So that's what I mean by pulse with module. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. This relay is just turning on and off five million times per second here. But we're not getting a good voltage. Do you want to try it on DC again, maybe? It's on DC now. Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't know. Might have to wait for the relay, boys. Okay, so it is the next day. Shout out to Dennis for giving me a hand with some wiring and hanging out and uh, wrenching. But what I'm going to do is I'm still waiting for that solid state relay to arrive. It's coming Amazon Prime but hasn't showed up yet. So I've got our eight speed, <laughs> if you're wondering why it's sitting like this. I don't feel like making a huge mess plus to elevate it to work upside down. So what I did was I rotated the transmission, I capped the vent so it's not puking all over the place. I'm gonna pull the pan, pull the valve body and then that way I can get the scent out. Uh, for a few reasons, I'll update you guys later on why I'm doing that, but I gotta get the valve body out of this so that I can uh, send it out and that way if we decide to well a few reasons if we decide to go eight speed i've got things ready or we might be having a party with our other eight speed kind of a bunch of stuff going on but either way i gotta get this out and get this sent out today so let's go So I got the transmission with the pan back on and flipped back over. I left the valve body out. I'm gonna leave it out just so uh, it's easier to reassemble. And then this is getting shipped off. So we've got that off. She's gonna get shipped. And now hopefully the relay shows up in a little bit and we can get back to this thing. All right, so it's a couple days later and the solid state relay did show up. So here it is, Hella, and it's a solid state. And nice enough, it's the exact size or similar size to a regular relay. So we won't have to do any modifications to the lid. So I'm gonna pop this out of here, swap this out with this one, and then we'll give her a shot. Okay, well, there's no instructions in this and I just figured it was wired up like a standard relay, but I ended up finding the pin out on it. And it's actually, even though it's the same looking, like same setup as a regular relay, the pin structure is different. So I've got to actually pop these pins out and reorganize them so that this thing functions as it should. Well. Me and Dennis, What's up? we uh, look at all this just electrical nonsense. We've been playing with resistors, all sorts of stuff. And then I ordered a second relay from Amazon because these relays, uh, I don't know, they work very oddly. So we were trying to figure out what the pinout was, get them to work. Uh, we're still in like a testing mode, but we ended up going with a conventional relay, turned down the frequency, turned up the duty cycle and we seem to be getting at least enough voltage so that we're charging right now but we haven't fully decided how we're going to do this but what I want to do is back this up get it heat cycled uh, I want to see that our fans turn on because you guys saw that we wired it in our fan relay get this thing heat cycled that way the Holly EFI can actually learn do a bit of self-learning at the same time and uh, I don't know we can kind of get this thing running a little bit now that we have reverse fans a working alternator maybe she can run for 20 minutes rather than just 30 seconds at a time so i'm going to move the hellcat ram out of the way we'll back it up and let it run for a bit Here she is. 
12, drove up on her own power. We got 12.7 on the battery. It's probably come up a little bit on that, but it's enough to keep it running. So, thermostat should be open. I think it's like 180 ish right now. Let me see. And then we'll see if the fans click on. All right, so we just hit 191. Our fans just came on. Oh man, we got rattles. That's it, I'm returning it to eBay. Kind of fans. Where is it rattling from? There's a little gap. Oh, the fan is rattling on the shroud? No, I think it's... Oh wait, is it this? A gap. Yeah, it's a little... Right down here. Right there. Oh. Fix it. <laughs> Probably have to put some foam around it. Seal them off a bit better. They're moving air though. Hot. Yeah. Let me see it. Look at the voltage. Oh, with the fans. So. Needs a little more duty on it. It's still hanging at 12. Not yeah. Let me see what our coolant temperature is. Yeah, 185. 185 on the coolant temp. Just chilling. 185? Yeah. Shut off. Fans turned off. Turn them back on. Hold it, just coming back up. It's got like new stink smell. It does have new stink smell. I don't know, it must be the exhaust, I guess. It's like, it's all the paint. Well, there's, you gotta remember the whole exhaust is coated on the inside, right? So, is it at the exhaust? Is it the yeah, exhaust that's coming, coming off the motor. Is it? <laughs> Heck yeah. Sounds pretty decent though. It does. Let her do her thing. Damn. I think it's got a stall in it though, because I had to like press on the gas quite a bit for it to. There we go. Yeah, we gotta put some foam behind these to isolate them better. That'll get annoying real quick. So, so the fan is, yeah, the fan is rattling on the shroud. So we're gonna have to put some foam behind this, but no big deal. All right, so, pardon the glare. All right, so without the glare, so you can see here, we are targeting 750, but if you go over here, and you can probably hear, we're 950 to 1,000. Well, me and Dennis are suspecting that the brake booster, because the brakes don't work that good, might be gone, and when Dennis tried pinching it like this, you hear the idle go down? So, this brake booster has a severe leak, so we're gonna have to order a brake booster, but when I let this off, you're gonna hear the RPM jump back up because this is pulling air from some sort of seal in there. So, new brake booster is definitely needed. So, not really important, but I was just curious. Blower motor hasn't worked. This thing was full of rat's nest before. And I'm gonna take out three screws and take this out and see how ugly it is in here. All right, check this out, you guys. This thing is disgusting. What is that? There's a little hose on it. Ew. 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 <laughs> that thing is packed. All right, turn it on. Let me put my face right here. <laughs> Oh my god. I wonder if the motor, you think the motor works? It was just jammed? Clear it out. Oh, I'm scared. 
I gotta find the connector. Let me get up in there and find the connector. All right, so we took out the glove box like this. We got the warranty information, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> the new pickup. 36,000 miles. From new a million years ago. And then we disconnected that. We got our two, the wire sits right here for whatever reason. So hopefully I can get it out of here. I'm gonna finagle it out and then we can get this out and maybe Dennis said he's gonna stick his face in it while I apply 12 volts and that's how we're gonna clean it up. He volunteered. What a nice guy. You can believe that? Dennis, that's what you said, right? <laughs> no, he's not agreeing to it. All right, let me get two hands on this. All right, here we go. Oh my God. It does free spin though. Look at that. That is so much junk. Nasty. It's still coming out too. You have to give her a little washy. All right, let's put 12 volts on her. Just give her a little tap ski. Oh, oh, you didn't even put it on here. What's going on? Oh. Dennis. That's it. That was almost like the radio fan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's a little sauce cleaning up. Woo! Oh, I got my mouth. Did it? So it moves? Yep. Let's just see. I just gotta clean this, but let's put it on the vehicle and see if it decides to turn on. Okay, so we know this motor works. Now it's just a matter of getting it to work in this here vehicle. Let's see. We need a key on. All right. Key on, Dennis. Give us some sauce. Woo! Yeah. Nada. Womp womp. Nothing. Have you checked fuses yet or anything? No. Well, I think I did. But. I think I made a test on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we wiggled the fuse. We didn't even change the fuse, and now. She works. Oh, that is hurricane wind. All right, so now we got a blower motor, just need to clean it up. All right, we got the shot back out. You know what that means. All right, so I got that vacuumed out, but I'm gonna pull this in because we're kind of losing daylight right now. And I'll take you guys for a little drive, show you guys kind of how she's running. I don't have a seat in it, so I'm sitting on the floor. So here we go, key on. <laughs> Silly little buzzer thing we gotta listen to. There we go, there. And then we gotta get the brake booster fixed, but there we go, that's first gear, so. And the steering works beautifully with the Holly power steering pump, you guys. We got power steering. Brakes are a little sketch, because I haven't done anything to them. I mean, we got brakes, but. I haven't done anything to them, and at the same time, like I mentioned, we do need to get a brake booster. So here we go, driving in, stomp on the brake pedal in the park. And same thing, I'll show you guys, so reverse. It clunks in a reverse and then it doesn't do anything until we hit this. And then you can see she smashes in a reverse. We're in neutral right now, and you can also put it in reverse in neutral. Like that, she's definitely aggressive. There's first, and we're back forward. So, I am literally about to go order a brake booster for this thing, and there she is. All right, so I wanna get this video out for you guys. I'm sure a bunch of people are wondering what the status is on this thing and what is going on with it. The alternator situation, trying to get that wired up, it, uh, it took days, honestly. I was trying to mess with it, and it was just one wire, you guys. One wire was kicking our butt trying to figure out how to get the correct signal on that wire. We're almost there. I'm gonna do a few other things and I'll update you guys on what my ultimate solution is, but at least for now, it's charging somewhat. I could probably turn it up a little bit more, but I'd rather it at least be you know somewhat satisfactory instead of if I 
commands too much alternator, then it's going to overcharge, which I don't want to do either. So thanks for watching guys. I'm going to order some parts. Um, I'm going to end up putting the lower motor back in, but not going to be that exciting. I'm going to wash it and stuff. So I'm going to clean all that out, but you guys don't have to watch me continue to clean that stuff out. We're getting a lot closer. Like I said, shipped off some stuff. So take your vote down below 727 or eight speed. Which one would you prefer to see? It also, I'm pretty sure it has a stall because you really have to rev it before you feel like a lot of engagement. So once I get some brakes on it, we can kind of test it out a little bit more. I'm a little bit nervous to try to use the trans brake uh, or even just try to, you know, see where the stall is just in case this thing takes off. I don't really have brakes. So I'm gonna get all that working. Also, I got some other stuff in the works. I'm kind of thinking you guys can vote down below on this as well. Should we put a third gen Ram 1500 rear axle in this? It has leaf spring perches. I'd have to probably reconfigure them from the research I've done, but it will give us disc brakes in the back and maintain a nine and a quarter rear end. You guys would rather see that uh, or just keep the drum brakes in the back? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. You guys have a lot of input on this build. So I'm gonna order some parts, clean some stuff up, and I'll see you guys on the next episode when we make some more progress on this Ram 1500 with the third gen Hemi swap. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.